Hey guys, Coach Gray here. Today we're going to be talking about my personal mechanics, some of the jargon that I use, some of the things we're going to be talking about in here, just so we're all on the same page. You know, a lot of coaches have different things they say. These are just the terms I use. Some of them are probably very similar to what you heard. Some of them might be completely new. So this is going to be a mechanics video and then also talking about my personal philosophy of hitting. Okay. So without further ado, we're going to talk about the setup. So when you're setting up to the plate, especially for some of you younger kids, how do you get set up? You can drop the outside of your bat right on the outside corner of the plate. Get your front foot lined up to the handle, so your toes right over it. Go ahead and pick up your bat from there. And when you take your load and stride, you should have enough barrel coverage to hit an outside, middle, and inside pitch and still be slightly back in the box, okay? So that's how you can tell about how far you should be away from the plate, okay? Next thing is about our grip. I got my knuckles lined up there. If you want, you can point your pointer fingers offside the bat, or out off the bat, and if they're slightly crossed, that's great, or slightly, or like parallel, that's great too. We just don't want them going away from each other too much because our elbows are out, and then definitely not too far in because our elbows are a little too close. So right about there is what I'm looking for, okay? Kind of more towards the fingers, uh, especially these bottom fingers, that's where I'm kind of feeling that whip in my barrel, okay? So, and, and we'll go over these again, but I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page for our mechanics, okay, when you guys are coming in here. The next part is our T placement, okay? So T placement, when we're doing T drills, is so important. If it's off, if it's too far out in front, you're training yourself to be too early. If it's too far back, you're training yourself to be too late. And you're gonna do things in your swing that are gonna mess you up mechanically, okay? You guys are good baseball players, so you guys are gonna hit a ball, but if it's too far out in front of you, you're gonna start lunging at it and, and compromising your mechanics, okay? So where do we know what's a good spot to set up the tee? If it's a pitch that's coming right down the, the middle of the plate, we want that pitch to be right in line with my front foot, okay? That's where I wanna make contact. So I get my setup, take my load and stride, Bang, pitch right down the middle, right in line with my front foot. Inside pitch. I'm a lefty, closer to me, we've got to move that up a little bit. We're swinging earlier, we want to drive it to right field as a lefty, okay? So, load stride, bang, in front of my front foot, okay? Now an away pitch, outside part of the plate, got to move it back, let the ball travel, okay? Load stride right off of my front knee, okay? And I'm hitting that pitch away. So most of the drills we're gonna do is gonna be right down the middle of the plate. So I'm gonna say, where do you go with that tee? Right in line with your front foot. Super overlooked, very, very important, okay? If you take away one thing from my talk today, get the tee placement right, okay? I'm gonna be checking you guys at practice. So we got our tee placement, we got my, my distance away from the plate. For my stance, you know, I'm comfortable with you guys going closed, open, you know, hands down, hands up, wherever you want to be, as long as you can get to the proper hitting position. There's a few key things that the best hitters in the world do, and we're going to be talking about what those things are, but there's a few things that you have the ability to play around with. One of them is your stance. How are you going to stand? How's your finish look? Uh, you know, kind of like how you're gripping the bats, your rhythm, your timing, right? That's all going to be kind of on you, and you can play around with that. But there's a few things that we need to do, okay? So our stance, you know, I recommend being about 50-50 with your weight, okay? Not too much on your backside, not too much on your front side. I'm trying to stay nice and relaxed, nice and comfortable, almost playing the piano with my hands, or my, with my fingers, right? Nice and relaxed, okay? This is about my position right here. Nice and relaxed. My hands are up by my shoulder. That's where I like to be. I'd recommend that too, so you can get a little bit of a load from there. The next thing is my load and stride. So my load, I'm, I'm, I'm getting my weight on my back foot, okay? That's more of my load. My elbow's going back this way with my hands as I get my load. And then my stride or my step is gonna be right in line with the pitcher or maybe a little bit closed off. We definitely don't wanna be stepping away outside, okay? If we're stepping out this way, everything pulls off. So we got my load. In my stride, I'm, walk, I'm stepping away from my hands. So my hands are going to be right here, and I'm stepping away from them to get a little bit of separation, okay? So we got my load, my stride, and then as my 
arm is starting to work down, my elbow is working down my hip, that's kind of like what I call slot. So I'm starting my slot with my back. At the same time, or actually a little bit before, my hip is starting to rotate. So my knee is driving, my hip is starting to rotate, and that is going to be what I call late rotation. So my hip is starting to go before my hands start going, okay? So that's where a lot of the power is gonna be built in your swing, through your hips and your legs. We're working from the ground up, okay? The last thing you want, energy transfer, working up through the kinetic chain is that barrel going the fastest right through the zone, making contact with the ball. We don't want our hands going faster, we don't want our hips going faster, we want the barrel being the fastest thing when we're making contact with that pitch. A lot of people call the late rotation separation too, I use that term too, separation, you should feel some tightness in your back. If you're making some tightness in your back, that's kind of like that rubber band effect. You're stretching out all your muscles, getting ready to fire into the ball, okay? We're trying to use our body to create as much force as possible. The strongest guys don't always hit it the furthest. It's how you use your body, and this is probably one of the, the biggest ways power is being generated from the ground up right at this moment. So you're gonna load stride, late rotation slot, right about there, my hips are starting to be around. Not fully open, we're never fully open here. It's kind of working this way through the ball, okay? Your hip needs to work underneath you, not around. We don't wanna go around, we want it to work underneath you. My back side is driving, my front side is bracing. My front side is the brakes, okay? If I have no brakes, I can't accelerate into the ball. I can't make the energy go into the baseball and I'll just coast right through, okay? You gotta be able to brace up against something. So, load, stride, slot, late rotation. Next part is right here, my, my foot's around. This is what I call bat lag. I'm right behind the baseball. I'm not up here, I'm not down here. I'm not here, my, my barrel's in the back of the zone. I wanna work behind the baseball so I can get through it, okay? This is something that I didn't even learn until around pro ball, to be honest. I was a pretty good hitter, but I would come down at the ball this way and then get my bat in the zone pretty late. And one thing I struggled with, and so I started figuring out, is how to hit for power away. And then also, if I was ever late on a pitch, especially later in my career when I was facing like 90, 95 plus, and I was late on something, I wouldn't be able to hit it because my bat wasn't in the zone. The best hitters have a perfect swing, and then they build their timing off of that. You don't have to have perfect timing, even though timing is very, very important as a hitter, probably one of the most important things. But if you have a perfect swing, perfect mechanics, you don't have to have perfect timing every time. You can catch it at different parts of the zone and still get pretty good hits out of it, okay? Bat path, bat lag, this is really gonna help you out, okay? So, Boom, I'm right here, I'm in my bat lag position. We don't want my hands in front of my belly button. I want it right at my belly button with my barrel in the zone. My barrel's slightly underneath my hands, okay? This is about belt high pitch for me, okay? But if the pitch is low, I'm trying to get behind it. Pitch is high, I'm a little bit uh, higher in the zone, okay? I'm trying to get right behind it. From here, that bat lag, we're going bat path. Bat path to contact, okay? This is my bat path. I want my bat path to be slightly up. The ball is coming down, the pitcher is on the mound, he's throwing slightly down, okay? We want a rising line drive. That is my focus when I'm trying to hit uh, my perfect pitch. I want a rising line drive, home run right over center field, like a laser, okay? And that's gonna maximize hard hits, contact. You can be a little under or a little over and still get a pretty good hit out of it, okay? driving to all fields. That's what I'm trying to think about. So if I'm coming down at this pitch, now I'm in the, only in the zone for this much, and my best hit, if I hit that perfectly, is gonna be a little bit down. If I'm too under, like this, and I hit it perfectly, it's gonna be probably a home run, but it has to be perfect. But I also don't have as much time in the zone. So I need to be so perfect that, you know, I, my philosophy is swinging slightly up to maximize you know, what I just talked about. Anyways, so swinging from bat lag slightly up to contact. For contact, a lot of times I'll put the ball on the tee with the two seams facing the catcher, and I'm trying to hit that inside seam first. I don't wanna come around it and hit the outside seam. I wanna keep my hands inside and then through as I extend through the zone. So a lot of times I'm focused on the inside seam as I swing, okay? So I'm here at contact. 
And then from there, I want to get extension through contact. A lot of the times I think about hitting through three more baseballs. So I hit the first one, but I want to get to this third one as well as I extend through the zone. This is going to help with power. This is going to help with timing, extension through the zone. Okay. So I'm here, make contact, and I'm extending through the zone, boom, before I roll my wrists. Okay, we don't want to roll through here. We want to extend out. My palm is up through contact like I'm throwing an underhand punch. I fully extend, and then I get to my finished position. In my finished position, I want my front foot to be pointing at third base. Righty's at first base. My leg is pretty locked out, but sometimes you need to soften it up to if you're off timing or off... Uh, a little bit in front of pitches to be able to keep your weight back, but locked out, you'll see that a lot, especially with a lot of elite hitters. Chest is back, matching that plane of your leg. We don't want to get bent over at the hip here, okay? My back foot's turned. I'm in this position. That's, that's my good finished position, okay? Another thing, when we're making contact with pitches, is I want to have good posture. One thing at posture, I didn't talk about it yet because I wanted you to see it this way is if I'm making contact with this pitch, I wanna have my shoulder under shoulder at contact, so I'm here. If, I'm, if I have bad posture and I'm up super straight, my shoulders are level, I can still hit that pitch, but I have to drop my hands. And that's when you become disconnected from that kinetic chain. You'll come around it a lot, you're gonna lose power, timing's gonna be funky, you're gonna lose your balance away from the plate a lot of times. If you lose your balance, make it be towards the plate every time, okay? and your posture will, will change at different pitches. If you've never found your posture before, stand straight up, put a bat or something behind your head, have it touch your head, your back, your, your butt, and then hip hinge, and then bend your knees. That's about the posture that you want, okay? You can stand straight up like Cody Bellinger, and then he's gonna get down there and have that back, butt back, chest forward. That's something you're probably gonna hear me a lot talk about. So butt back, chest forward, low stride, slot, back, path, lag, point of contact, extension, and then your finish. And you want to have a little bit of lean over. A higher pitch, less lean. Lower pitch, you got to get in those legs, have more posture, okay? So those are just a rough review of the mechanics, okay? I know that was kind of a lot, but uh, you, can, you can have this video to always look back on, okay? The next thing is just my hitting philosophy. If you want to hit hard, you gotta work on hitting the ball hard. Every single rep, have good focus, have good intent, okay? Attention to detail on all these little things. There's a lot of things I didn't even cover on here that I would wanna talk to you about, but I just don't want this video to be an hour long, okay? The next thing too is rising line drives. We touched on that. Rising line drives, hitting the ball hard, making every rep count. You gotta have balance, consistency in your swing. The, and, and timing, the pitcher's trying to mess with your timing every single time. And your job is to get on your timing. You can do that with rhythm, balance, timing up the pitcher on deck. So many mental things that we can talk about. But that was the mechanical video and a little bit on my philosophy. Thanks for tuning in.